best rivalries in all of college baseball. And it begins today in Columbia, South Carolina. It's the Gamecocks of South Carolina and the Tigers of Clemson from Founders Park here in the capital city. Hello, everybody. I am Birch Entley along with my broadcast partner, Kip Boltnight. And it's chilly weather tonight in Columbia in a rivalry that is always hot between these two teams. Yeah, South Carolina Clemson, best rivalry in baseball, if you ask me. Both teams, though, would love to be in the top ten, which we've seen South Carolina and Clemson be in so many years in the past. But South Carolina looking to try to get game one tonight and obviously a tough foe in Clemson. Anytime you play this rivalry, a lot of emotion, a lot of guys really trying to come out and play their best. And Carmen Bajensky is going to have a uh, – a tough time tonight as far as just getting into the groove, a really tough Clemson team, and it's just going to be a great game. Well, this is a rivalry that usually has national implications as well, sometimes out in Omaha. For South Carolina, Carmen Majinski. It was last year, a season ago against Clemson, this time in Clemson when he went down with that injury to his foot, and he was on the shelf for the remainder of the year. And the numbers are stellar this year for Majinski. You see them there, 2-0, an ERA at 0.64. And what is so impressive, nine strikeouts and just two walks. Yeah, Majinski's been outstanding in his two starts, and he's going to try to come out and establish the strike zone early. He's got a heavy sinker, 94, 95, up to 96, and just really, really amazing stuff. A guy that could easily be in the first round. Uh, in the Major League Baseball draft. And, again, when I say a tough time that Majinski's got, I think more mentally than anything, as you see the Clemson batting order here, that he'll be going against against tonight. They're going to lead off with Elijah Henderson, the Tigers are, followed by Kier Meredith, who has been doing a stellar job for the Tigers getting on base, especially at the top of the order. That's what you need if you're head coach Monty Lee. James Parker, the third baseman, Swinging from the left side, batting cleanup. Then it's Adam Hackenberg, the catcher. So some pop for the Clemson Bats. who suffered their first loss of the season in a midweek game earlier after starting the season on a hot streak, winning their first seven. First pitch for Majinski is in there for strike one. And South Carolina is starting pitchers this year. So far early in the season, Kip, they have gotten strikes early. Yeah, you see there, 95, just that ball's a ball until the last six, seven feet and just runs back over the outside corner. Excellent start here from Majinski. The 0-2 slapped to third. Heinrich over to first, one out. Nice play by third baseman Jeff Heinrich. There's Wes Clark, who has been become the everyday first baseman here for South Carolina. Noah Myers out in center, a lot of speed for the Gamecocks there with Noah Campbell in left, speed to burn in the outfield. Andrew Eister over in right. There's George Khalil, the shortstop. A couple of errors for the Gamecocks on a Tuesday game against North Florida. Braylon Wimmer, the second baseman, and Jeff Heinrich at third. Dallas Beaver catching. Unable to make the backhanded play is the first baseman, Clark, and a runner aboard. Key air Meredith at is a streak con- that continues of Meredith just finding a way to get on base. Yeah, Majinski doing hitter. a good job there, just pounding the strike zone, good ground ball base hit there. But really good job by Wes Clark almost making that play over at first base as he knows Majinski would be over there to cover first on any ground ball to the right side. Meredith has now reached every game this season. You know, Clemson only two home runs coming into this game, Birch, and I think that, you know, it's cold tonight. Obviously, the ball, watched MVP, the ball's flying out to right center a little bit, but I still think Majinski is going to just try to attack these hitters and work ahead. Called strike there on the DH, the sophomore Davis Sharp. And Majinski here, runner on first one out, needs to just trust his stuff and know that he can make a good quality pitch and get another ground ball and try to roll a pair. That's going to get away from Clark and allow scoring position and Moore gunning for third, Meredith. And he is there, so South Carolina, not a 
great way to get Majinski the start you wanted from him as far as the defense is concerned. I'm not quite sure there, Wes Clark. That wasn't a great throw there by Majinski, but maybe a play that I think Wes Clark. It's going to go down as a throwing error on Majinski. Yeah, it'll definitely be a throwing error, but I think it's a play that Wes Clark uh, can make and, and probably should have made. As a first baseman there, you have to expect a bad throw, and I think he caught, caught himself a little bit flat-footed there. Majinski really needs a strikeout right here. South Carolina, as we know in this rivalry, momentum can play a huge part. Majinski looking here in a one-two count to try to put Sharp away. On deck is James Parker. Parker swinging at a clip of 357 so far this season with three runs driven in. Here's the one, two in the dirt. Good job by Dallas Beaver to keep that from getting anywhere outside of his range because anything close, Meredith is going to take off. Yeah, it looked like Majinski maybe went with a change up there. A little surprised at that pitch selection. See 2 2 action pitch here. Let's see what he goes with. Beaver set up outside, tried to bring it back in for home plate umpire tonight, Scott Kennedy. It's ball three, 3 2 count, one out, runner on third. You know, I think this is where Majinski really doesn't need to give in right here. If I'm him, I still go for the strikeout here. And I don't think that's a bad decision there because we know with Majinski's sinker, 93-97, a good sinker right here, and he, he rolls up here and gets a double play ball. I'm okay with that walk, Birch. I mean, I, I think that that is a situation, even though it's the first inning, you're not wanting to put guys on, but right here, Majinski's got a right-on-right -right matchup. Uh, good opportunity to, to induce another ground ball. So just the third walk this season, from Carmen Majinski, runners on the corners here for Clemson with one out. Call strike there on James Parker, the sophomore third baseman. The numbers there, huge, 946 on base percentage, hitting 357. Oh, Trying to get the outside again. and. It's Scott Kennedy saying no, ball one. Yeah, and Kennedy gives him a, a, on 0-0. On that was a cut fastball that, in my opinion, was off the plate and called it a strike. And then that pitch, in my opinion, was more of a strike. But I think that was a little bit of a makeup call there. Good pitch there by Majinski. I would stay with that sinker there, that running in on his hands down below his barrel at 94. You got two choices here. You can go for the the breaking ball here, maybe for strike three, or you stay hard and go for that sinker. Try to induce that ground ball. He goes with the, the, with the breaking ball. Big strikeout there for Majinski. Not a lot of strikeouts on the season for Carmen Majinski, Birch, but. That is a case there where you see excellent stuff, really, really good breaking ball there. Needed a strikeout and got it. Tenth strikeout of the season now for Merjinski here in his third start. So two outs and Adam Hackenberg at the plate, the sophomore catcher. Big swing and a miss. Good fastball from Majinski. Yeah, that was actually a little bit of a cut fastball there, a little cutter there. That helps keep the guys off of the normal two-seam fastball we see from Majinski, and I think he's going to come back with the two-seamer here. Uh, maybe another cutter setting up out, away. Oh, he goes with the fastball. Outstanding. I mean, that, that pitch is almost unhittable, Birch. If you're going to have an umpire and Scott Kennedy give you that, Pitch. I, I mean, as a hitter, you, you have to take it. Same spot again for Majinski if you're 0-2. I think he's going to go back to that breaking ball here that he had the big strikeout in to the last hitter. Slapped over to third, nicely backhanded 
by Heinrich. Successful throw over and Majinski and the Gamecocks come away clean. The Tigers strand a pair. One error, one hit, nobody in. We go to the Gamecocks half of the first here in Columbia in this great rivalry. It's Clemson in South Carolina. That is a professional grounds crew getting everything prepared here for a big Friday at Founders Park in Columbia in the big rivalry series. South Carolina and Clemson, two games this season in Columbia, but not the same parks. And then back up to Clemson for Sunday. Here is Sam Weatherly from Howell, Michigan, 6'4", junior, 205. No relation to Sean Weatherly, the Clemson graduate that was Miss America and later starred in Baywatch. 1-0 on the year with an ERA just like Majinski, below one, nine through 10 innings. Only four hits, good numbers with the strikeouts compared to the walks too. 22 strikeouts, seven walks for Weatherly. Yeah, you, you see those numbers from last year out of the bullpen primarily and a guy that has electric stuff here, Birch. I was talking to Monty Lee, head coach for Clemson, prior to the game. And when Weatherly is in the strike zone, uh, virtually unhittable, just outstanding stuff. That's Noah Myers to lead off, followed by Noah Campbell and then Andrew Eister, Wes Clark. The cleanup banner, and it's Anthony Amicangelo getting the DH role tonight. And then Jeff Heinrich, George Khalil, Dallas Beaver, and Braylon Wimmer. The Gamecocks order from one to nine. Noah Myers with tremendous speed, and he had a huge game for South Carolina Tuesday against North Florida. Led off with a big triple. Ahead in the count, 2-0 here. The numbers for Myers, look at that on-base percentage, stellar. Yeah, outstanding here. Weatherly looking to just try to find the zone here. Gets the strike. Well, dump me over breaking ball there in a 2-0 count. I think he'll be coming back with the hard stuff here. All right, goes with another slider there. Great pitch there by Weatherly. That makes it really, really tough. You're going to throw a a 2-0 slider to the first batter. I mean, as Noah Myers left on left, really, really tough. Back-to-back -to -back sliders from Weatherly. Count evens, two balls, two strikes. And he gets the strikeout. Noah Myers goes down. 23 strikeouts now on the season for Weatherly. Brings up the switch hitter, Noah Campbell. Let's set Clemson's defense for you. It's Adam Hackenberg behind the plate over at first. Briar Hawkins, Elijah Henderson, the second baseman, Pierce Gallo, James Parker over on the left side of the infield, then Kier Meredith, Bo Makowski in center, and Dylan Brewer over in right. Excellent first pitch, fastball in there by Weatherly to Noah Campbell. Coming in at 94. Swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. Noah Campbell behind here on the starter, Sam Weatherly. We got the strikeout of Noah Myers. On base percentage for Noah Campbell's pretty good this season too, just like Myers before him. We're going to see another back foot slider here from Weatherly to try to get Campbell going down swinging. Misses up top. Yeah, he was trying that, but he got a little bit too, tried to throw that one a little bit too hard there. And Noah, count, Noah Campbell evens the count back at two and two. Hangs in there as he tips that foul. Noah Campbell could be one of the guys for South Carolina in this series. He's got a, really the most experience playing in this rivalry that could be a T.J. Hopkins-type player in this series for the Gamecocks. That's what 
certainly what Gamecock fans are hoping for. The 2-2. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes now. Good at bat here from Campbell as he runs the count full. Gets Campbell chasing that high heat there, and that's another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Weatherly. So it brings up Andrew Eister with two outs, and one benefit of that pitch count going full for South Carolina there with Noah Campbell was gave Andrew Eister some more good looks at Weatherly. Big fastball, 95 miles per hour there. Let's see the numbers on Eister. Ball's behind, no balls, two strikes. Yeah, great pitcher's pitch there. Good take by Eister. That's 94 down and away on the black. Boy, really seeing two awesome juniors on the mound here for Clemson and South Carolina tonight. Astro stays alive. No balls, two strikes, two outs as Sam Weatherly has fanned the first two batters he has faced, Noah Campbell and Noah Myers before him. The 0-2 misses for a ball. So if you're Eister here, what do you expect from Weatherly? Well, you have to respect the fastball, obviously, at 95. I think he's coming with a slider here, but I think this is where I would double up if I'm Weatherly and go the fastball in. And he goes with the slider there, and it gets away from him. Eister does a good job of taking one for the team there and getting a hit batter and taking first base. Here's a look at Eister right there. So run around with two outs. Wes Clark, the first baseman. And I think that's just where Weatherly there just tried to get a little too cute. I would have stayed hard there, saving that wipeout slider maybe for a situation where he needed to get outs with runners in scoring position. Two outs, nobody on there. Not a good decision there, in my opinion. You know, brings up Wes Clark, a guy that's hitting over 300 with four bombs and 14 RBIs. 14 RBIs. It's good to get him up with runner on runner on base. So again, Weatherly jumps ahead. First pitch strike. Worked a 3-2 count to Noah Campbell getting a strike out and then started Andrew Eicher out. No balls, two strikes, but then eventually hitting Eister, putting him on first. Pumps in the strike there, nothing into the count. 19 pitches, two strikeouts, and a hit batter here for Weatherly. Ripped foul. Everybody protecting all of their beverages tonight. Yeah, there's some talk about that. We had a last outing, Birch, I think it was a line drive in that left field area there where a, an adult beverage was hammered. And I think uh, folks were talking about, would you try to catch it or get rid of the beer as Weatherly just Outstanding. That, he just blew that fastball by West Clark there, Birch. Outstanding piece of pitching there from Sam Weatherly. And no score through one.
Great crowd on hand, as you would expect, to get this rivalry weekend underway. We go to the top of the second, no score. Clemson one hit, South Carolina had a runner on, but courtesy of the hit banner, Weatherly striking out three Gamecocks. Carmen Majinski, seven hits, no runs through the first six innings this season. Uh, one run has occurred just in that seventh inning when he opened up the season for South Carolina with a win over Holy Cross. For Clemson at the plate, and here's Dylan Brewer, the freshman right fielder. He's got Briar Hawkins behind him and then Bo Mikowski. Six, seven, and eight in Monty Lee's batting order. Called strike. Brewer, one of the two left-handed, or excuse me, three left-handed bats in this Clemson lineup. Aired to right. Eister is there for South Carolina, one down. So Briar Hawkins, sophomore first baseman, Hawkins hitting it just 077. He's had four starts. This is his fifth. And behind him, Makowski, 0 for 11 at the plate this season. Drops that for a single. So a runner on with one out. And that will boost your confidence anytime you're in a slump to yeah. stroke one cleanly like that off of a pitcher like Carmen Majinski. So Clemson with a runner on. You see that breaking ball there just left up. Uh, just, you know, gosh, Majinski there, you're facing a guy hitting 077 and you throw 96 with a lot of sink. I'm, th I'm staying hard there. Just as I would do here is this Mikowski's up with, you know, hitting nothing for the year in 11 at-bats. And uh, that certainly, I'm sure, doesn't talk to his talent and what he has in the tank. But Majinski needs to just pound the zone and go right after him with that sinker. Count evens up one ball, one strike. Mikowski, his dad. Actually threw some touchdown passes to a former Gamecock football player, Sterling Sharp, when his dad was the starting quarterback before Brett Favre at Green Bay. Good job, Majinski there with changing his hold times there and a potential hit and run or straight steal situation there in a 1-1 count. If I'm Majinski here, I'd stay hard after that swing. Maybe even go fastball in here. Swing and a miss. Hitless so far on the season remains Mikowski. Two strikeouts now of Clemson batters. And he goes with a change up there, and that's a good pitch because it was a chase pitch. It was a one-two count, and I think if that pitch is in the zone, it, it, it brings up an opportunity for him to, to hook one in the four hole there as Wes Clark's holding the runner at first base, but good job of expanding the strike zone there by Majinski. One for six at the plate this season. Here's Pierce Gallo, slapped to short, easily to second. Khalil to Wimmer to end the inning. So Clemson leaves a runner stranded, no score. Here at Founders Park, Hickox two up. And picking up here at Founders Park. We will get Carolina's second underway. The Gamecocks will send to the plate Anthony Amicangelo, Jeff Heinrich, and George Khalil, five, six, and seven, to see Sam Weatherly, who struck out three of the four Gamecocks he saw in the first. Gamecock hitters in this game, they're going to have a lot to work with. These Clemson pitchers this season, they've been pretty stellar. 
Holding opponents just a 132 batting average when on base. That makes Monty Lee very, very happy. Yeah, I mean, you held opponents to three run or three runs or less in the seven out of eight outings. Very, very impressive. I think South Carolina is just going to have to try to do a good job of not getting too big here and just trying to mix in a couple singles here and there and get Emma. Emma Cangello. Yeah, and, and, and get Weatherly to where he's having to pitch out of the stretch a little bit. They just need to try to get some base runners. Hit high in the left. Meredith charges in, makes the catch. And on a chilly, brisk night, you know, some Amicangelo maybe in your coffee would be pretty good. Or maybe I'm thinking of Frangelo. Sounds good. Never had it, Birch, but I'd be willing to try it. Is this a coffee you got me? Is this a little That hot would be chocolate? hot chocolate for you. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think I will. Here's Jeff Heinrich. One out here in the Gamecock second. First pitch strike from Weatherly. You know, right now from Weatherly, you're seeing him dump that slider over for a first pitch strike some, and he's throwing both pitches, his 95-mile-an-hour fastball from the left side, throwing it in and out for strikes as well as the slider. Really a tough combination for these Gamecock hitters to face. That's strike three. Wow, I don't know where that missed. That was an outstanding pitch there by Sam Weatherly. I'm not quite sure what Scott Kennedy was looking at there. That looked like a fastball right there on the outside corner for strike three. Heinrich's probably gonna be getting a slider here. It brings the one, two to short. And the throw over is successful for Pierce Gallo. So it's two down quickly. Here in the second brings up George Khalil for Carolina. And he gets that slider there, and I think right now, and, and, and you know, it's obviously sometimes easy to see up here, Birch, but he's fallen into a little bit of a pattern, and it'd be interesting to see if he tries to double up that fastball from time to time. If I'm South Carolina and these right-handed hitters, he's getting to a one-two count. If he does, he's coming with that slider every time, and he could almost sit on it. First pitch strike to Khalil from Melbourne, Australia. Gamecock shortstop. Played junior college ball in Texas. Ball's behind, no balls, two strikes. Mark Kingston, third year head coach for Carolina with another look at Clemson in town finally broke through the Gamecocks did winning the series last year, snapping a series win streak for Clemson that had reached four. Shortstop with a chance again is Gallo over to Hawkins for the third and final out. It's a one, two, three quick inning of work for Weatherly. Clemson, do up when we return. No score from Founders Park in Columbia. No score in Columbia as we go to the third. Clemson with a pair of hits, no errors. South Carolina has yet to scratch anything on Clemson starter Sam Weatherly. One Gamecock error, that was charged to pitcher Carmen Majinski. Throwing back to first to try to get Kier Meredith back on first and got away from Wes Clark and Meredith went all the way to third. It was just one out then and then the next batter walked but Majinski was able to get a strikeout of James Parker and then elicited a ground out to third on a nice backhanded play by Heinrich to get Adam Hackenberg to get out of that inning. He's got to deal with the top of the lineup. Henderson, Meredith and Sharp. One, two, three here for Clemson. Count even is up. One ball, one strike after that foul. J. 
Chance for Heinrich again, third baseman, quickly over to first. And Majinski takes care of Elijah Henderson. Now it's Kier Meredith who had the single and then was left stranded on third. 30 pitches now for Majinski. Good sinker there from Majinski to get the first out of the inning. And I know Meredith got a hit in his first at bat on a sinker, but I'd stay hard on him right here and get another ground ball. And that's going to be extra bases for Meredith. He's going to be in scoring position. Takes second easily. He can really run. Yeah, he can, and that was an excellent bunt there and a great job by Majinski really running hard and getting to that ball there. Good throw, and he's out. Wes Clark unable to pick it there, but uh, it'll definitely be the throw in there. I got a feeling it'll probably give him a hit and an error there, but uh, it's a play that Majinski knows he can make and uh, very athletic off the mound. It's a play that he, he – He's going to make that play six out of ten times. Just a bad throw. Misses outside to Davis Sharp, who he walks in the first. So the official word is just a hit. No error. Nope, they're going to charge it to him now. So the two errors for South Carolina, both throwing errors by Carmen Majinski. Both plays where Meredith is involved. Yeah, and I mean, Majinski is um, a, a very good athlete, very uncharacteristic unchar there, and a play that, uh, a tough play, but a play that I think Majinski should have made. A good throw gets him out. To Khalil at short, good scoop by West Clark at first. So two out, runner at third, Kier Meredith. So brings up James Parker. No hit on that bunt by Meredith, so just an error charge to Majinski. Clark to Majinski, and again, Meredith takes third, but is left there. Majinski showing he can fill that position, like you said there, kept ball night, and nothing doing for Clemson. We go to the bottom of the third. No score. Welcome back to Founders Park in Columbia. It doesn't matter what kind of weather it is outside. If you're under the age of 12, it's going to be a frozen treat for you anytime. <laughs> I hear you. I don't think I'd – I don't know if I'd eat one right now, Birch, if the, someone brought us up a – Well, you're not under the age of 12. I'm sure your two boys are probably digging into something like that right now. Probably so. Probably having a little ice cream right now, you know, enjoying it, getting ready for a little root cellar practice tomorrow. First game's next Saturday, Birch. Big time, March 7th in Lexington. Coaches pitch action. Uh, looks like Weatherly missing his first pitch there. That has been rare. But it comes back to get Dallas Beaver swinging to even up the count. One ball, one strike. It's Beaver, Wimmer, and then back to the top of the lineup with Noah Myers. One ball, two strikes. Eight batters, six first pitch strikes for Weatherly. Only one base runner for Carolina. That was Andrew Eister who was hit by a pitch. Weatherly's had very good control of the strike zone so far. Time called. 
Yeah, it's an action pitch here. You know, Weatherly's been really good with that slider, but it's 2-2, nobody out, nobody on. It's a 0-0 game. I'm staying hard right here and keeping that slider in my back pocket. And see here, he runs the count three and two and, and didn't get Beaver to chase there, Birch. And I think, you know, again, to try to get to the seventh, eighth inning, that's also he's showing Beaver something, in my opinion, he didn't necessarily have to there. And that's just a walk trying to be too cute, in my opinion. If I'm Weatherly there, I'm trusting my 95-mile-an-hour fastball in a 2-2 count there and challenging him instead a no-out walk, which most times – that does come out to come back to bite you. So Beaver aboard to start the inning for South Carolina. Brings up Braylon Wimmer in the nine spot for the Gamecocks. Let's see if Kingston, Mark Kingston tries to play small ball here and he does. Wimmer brings it back. One ball, no strikes. South Carolina showing some patience here now and seeing if they can rattle Weatherly, who was pretty spot on as far as command of the strike zone earlier. Just kind of a uh-oh, but it works out for Braylon Wimmer. That you couldn't have really drawn it up any nicer on that pitch like that. But it puts the Gamecocks where they want to be in scoring position with one out. See there, did a good job of squaring around early, and that was a tough pitch to bunt there. Good job of just catching that ball. Maybe not off the end of the bat there, but good job of sacrificing himself and getting that runner to second base. Gamecocks in business now. Dallas Beaver at second, and here's Noah Myers with one out. He struck out swinging his first look. So after going the first two innings, really starting these hitters out with first pitch strikes, it's been opposite. Myers now ahead, two balls, no strikes. And, and you see now, you know, Situation, obviously you got a runner in scoring position. Now we're seeing South Carolina, the more times they've seen that slider now as they come through the second time in the order, I think that makes a big difference. Is Boy, I tell you, Bo Mikowski really playing shallow in center field. That's some pitchability there. Good 2-0 slider there to Noah Myers. Myers batting. 3.08 on the season, strikeout tonight. Looking at a 2-1 count. Goes to 3-1. And Noah Myers needs to be sitting right here on one pitch in one location. One for four this season with runners in scoring position. One run driven in. Got a chance to do so with a runner in scoring position at second, Dallas Beaver. And he, Noah Myers works the walk. Two aboard for the Gamecocks. Nine balls thrown through the first two innings for Weatherly. Nine here to just two batters, or three batters rather, rather, that he has seen, and two that he's put it board because of the walk. And I think that's just a combination there of just Weatherly trying to do too much, concerned about uh, just trying to be too cute and, and not pitching to contact there as he has now put himself in a jam with two walks here. Second time up for Campbell, who saw a lot of pitches going down, however, on strikes and a full count in the first. You know, if I'm Campbell right here, I'm sitting slider. You just really haven't seen too many back-to-back -back fastballs yet today from Weatherly. And there it, there it goes, another fastball there. 
Good job there by switching it up by Weatherly. So jumps ahead, no balls, two strikes here to Noah Campbell. Andrew Eister on deck for the Gamecocks. One out, two on. Noah Campbell this season with runners in scoring position, hitting 444. Gets him swinging. That's a big strikeout, fourth of the ball game here for Sam Weatherly to buckle down after putting on two runners courtesy of the walk to get Noah Campbell on three big swings there, and that is a huge out for Clemson. Huge, and I think he, he went back to his bread and butter, in my opinion. he Yes, he's got a good slider, but his best pitch, a 95-mile-an-hour mile an hour fastball, and Weatherly now has switched gears and now they have to respect. They got to look at both pitches now, and he's not falling into any patterns. And really, really good job. Big second out there for Weatherly. Eister hit well, but really high. Meredith right there, and it's the third out of the inning. So the Gamecocks will strand a pair. Weatherly walking a couple, but then getting a big strike out of Campbell, and then a fly out to end the inning for Andrew Eister. No score still in Columbia after three. Clemson, no runs, two hits, no errors. South Carolina, no runs, no hits, two errors, both throwing errors by Carmen Majinski. Win picking up even more here in the capital city of Columbia. One more game in Columbia tomorrow. However, for the first time in this rivalry series, it will be at the Fireflies ballpark over on Bull Street. And it should be weather probably similar to today. And then the series will end on Sunday at Doug's King, Doug Kingsmore in Clemson. 321st meeting in this rivalry. Clemson leads all time. Last season, the Gamecocks won the series taking game one in Clemson and then game three here in Columbia. And that was a big T.J. Hopkins weekend. If I'm a Jensky right here, I'm trying to have about a six or seven pitch inning and just challenge this lineup and, and make them prove to me they can hit my sinker. Hackenberg hits that ball hard, but off the wall. It hung up a little bit. Campbell able to get it in. It's a runner in scoring position to lead things off for the Tigers. Hackenberg got a hold of that pitch. and Wind kind of knocks that down. Yeah, I, I think that's a home run if the wind's not blowing out really, really hard to right as Majinski again throws the fastball. It flattens out. It's moving laterally. It's not sinking. And, Birch, you know, he's really just only thrown sinkers away. There, there, there is yet to be a pitch middle, middle in. Everything he's throwing is away. And South Carolina, or excuse me, Clemson now, after seeing him, they're going to maybe start looking out over the middle of the plate there to take advantage of. I mean, you, you've got to pitch to both sides of the plate. And Majinski has yet to throw a fastball inside all night long. It was a fly out to right. Andrew Eister making the play to lead off the second. Dylan Brewer is only time up to see Majinski. 39 pitches here for Carmen Majinski, who started the opening affair of this rivalry series a season ago that only went three and a third before he had that kind of freakish injury where he was coming off the mound and wound up breaking his foot. He's out for the rest of the season. You see there he goes with a, another change up there. And I, I think if you're doing that, it's, you know, runner on second, nobody outs here. I'm staying with that hard sinker away, trying to get a ground ball to the left side to keep that runner from being able to advance to third base here. If you're going to do that, it's got to be a chase pitch and go for a strikeout. Fouled away. Count on Brewer remains. 
One ball, two strikes. You, know, you slowed him down. You've gone with the change up away. You've gone with the change up away. You go with the fastball here. And I think Skylar Meade's going to come out now and maybe talk to Majinski about that. I, I just think there's a lot of holes right here. If he could zip a fastball in, I think he gets a called strike three. Up on second base, the runner for Clemson, Adam Hackenberg. Sophomore catcher led off with a squared down double to left field. Wynn knocked it down, kept that ball in this park. You know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Majinski got a big strike out there in the first inning with a runner on third and, and, and less than two outs. Big strikeout potential here. That is hit well and where that wind is blowing and that is gonna be cranked out of here for sure. Two run bomb off the bat of sophomore first baseman, Briar Hawkins. Just the first home run allowed this season for Majinski. That got up into that jet stream in a hurry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I definitely don't agree with that, that, that pitch selection there. Uh, if you're going to throw the changeup, it's got to be. And, and again, it's about execution. That pitch is just sitting on a tee. And and certainly credit Dylan Brewer, or yeah, excuse Brewer. Me, Brewer, hitting the bomb. But, you know, even if that's a ground ball to second base, it's it, yes, it's an out, but the runner moves to third there. And I, I just think that I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not uh, – First I'm collegiate home run for that. Dylan Brewer. And for Dylan, just his fourth hit of the season. Fourth longest active streak in the nation. Clemson scoring at least one run in 114 consecutive ball games. They lead here, two nothing. You know, I mean, you look at it, Birch. I mean, it's 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 not like it's 80 degrees and you know a lot of humidity and a warm night. I mean, this is a night where ideally, I mean, this is a pitcher's dream on a night like tonight. And if I'm throwing 94 to 97 with a sinker, I am making those guys prove to me that they can hit that. And you see a good sinking fastball there that runs back over the outside corner to get strike three for the first out of the inning. But again, we, we you know, everything's away, everything's away. And then the soft that he's throwing, obviously he hangs that change up there for the two run home run in the at-bat prior, but I, I think for Majinski to get to the seventh or eighth inning tonight, he's going to have to throw a fastball in. And that's a cutter there. you got to be able to throw your fastballs on both sides of the plate. Here's Mikowski, hitless on the season. 0 for 12 is Mikowski. He struck out his first look in the second inning against Gamecock starter Carmen Majinski. Here's the 1-1. One, one. one ball, two strikes now. One out, Clemson with two runs on the board. Two run home run, first of his collegiate career for freshman right fielder Dylan Brewer. Picked up that Wind blowing heavily to right, cranking it out of Founders Park for just the third Clemson home run of the season. Four strikeouts now for Majinski as he takes care of Mikowski, who's still looking for his first hit of the season. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's the changeup, obviously. Majinski's trying to throw to Brewer. That's there, but I, I still – I still just don't think because even if he hits a nubber down the first base line, it's fair. Then you got a runner on third with one out, and I just think it's the wrong pitch selection in that situation. Plus, based on how Brewer swung at the changeup prior, just uh, tough luck there for Majinski. Pitch count at 50. He'll get the strike to Pierce Gallo. Grounded out to short in the second inning. See that pitch there? That pitch was almost down the middle, maybe a little bit towards the inner half. 
and he had no chance whatsoever. You follow it up right here with a fastball, same two-seamer, in on the black, has no chance. Count evens up two balls, two strikes. 53 pitches now for Carmen Majenski. You know, we see Majenski as he matures, being able to try to read those hitter swings and see what they're showing him, good or bad. And it looks like he's going back away. And it's a great pitch on the outside corner. Great sinker there. Runs back over the outside corner. Five strikeouts now for Majinski, but not before Brewer with a two-run blast. His first of the season, and Clemson goes up two to nothing. For South Carolina, Wes Clark, Anthony Amicangelo, and then Jeff Heinrich. Four, five, and six in the Carolina order due up to face Sam Weatherly, the Clemson starter. Base runners tonight for Carolina. They've been on base three times, a hit batter, and two walks, and that's it. Weatherly now with a shutdown opportunity here. Wants to try to keep the momentum there, and that's a 96 mile an hour. Wow, that has some late action too, Burge. That ball just darts away from Wes Clark. Outstanding stuff. I tell you what, if you're a scout, a major league scout, you're seeing some great starting pitching for these two clubs. Grounder to second. Handled nicely by Henderson over to Hawkins. So Clark, the ground out, one out now here in the Gamecocks fourth, trailing two to nothing, brings up Anthony Amicangelo. Flew out to left his only time up. That was back in the second inning to lead things off. That was a 1-2-3 inning for Weatherly. I was looking at some of the other matchups around the Southeastern Conference and the ACC tonight. I don't know what in the world Vanderbilt is thinking. They have instead not you know they're playing Hawaii not in Hawaii but in Tennessee it has to be a home and home I mean maybe they went to Hawaii last year or they're going next year has to be I mean, you can't schedule Hawaii if you don't get a chance to go there can you I and mean, that's like scheduling a trip out to Wally world and they're doing construction yeah just make sure you park towards the back you know you want to be first out sorry folks parks closed Big strike there for Weatherly. Jumps ahead, one ball, two strikes. And I tell you, I go back to that Campbell strikeout on three straight fastballs. Weatherly really has it set up here now. I think these Gamecock hitters, they're watching in the dugout. They have no idea what's coming here, fastball or slider. You see that late swing there and with two strikes. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it makes it really, really difficult when you're not predictable and you're able to throw your fastball to both sides. I mean, right now, Weatherly literally can go fastball up, he can go fastball in and double up there, or he can go slider. Here's the one, two. He'll stay alive, Emma Jello will. Weatherly, he's used to this type of weather. He's from Michigan. Was a highly sought after player in the state of Michigan coming out of high school. He'll bring the one two again. And he gets Sam Cangelo swinging. Five strikeouts for Sam Weatherly. Now, one adjustment Sam Weatherly's made is he's really gone back to the fastball now 
and he's starting to dial in. I mean, he, he went with that slider early on, and I think he was getting a little bit too slider happy. And a lot of times when you do that, Birch, as a pitcher, you can lose your command at times with your fastball. And Weatherly now is in prime position here to have a big shutdown inning and keep that momentum with Clemson. Jeff Heinrich, the Gamecock third baseman, grounded out to short. Part of that one, two, three inning in the second. First pitch strike. Almost got Heinrich to chase that pinch, but and I ball love called the, and laying off is Heinrich. Yeah, excuse me, Birch. I love the attempt there, though, from Hackenberg setting up there as Weatherly was trying to throw the fastball in and missed up there. Would have been a good sequence there after our first pitch dumped me over slider coming back with that fastball in. And the guys are just, I mean, they're, you know, you look at it, I mean, even on the other side with Majenski, these two guys have power fastballs, a power sinker in Majenski and a power fastball here. They just, they're not able to catch up to it. And, and when you can throw the wipeout slider there, the back foot Johnny, outstanding from Weatherly as he has a big shutdown inning and keeps the mo going for the Clemson Tigers. And they lead two to nothing, heading to the fifth. Clemson with two runs off of five hits, no errors. South Carolina, pair of blanks in the run and hit column, and then a pair of errors on the fielding side, and both belong to Carmen Majinski. He's got the top of the Clemson lineup to get the fifth underway. Elijah Henderson, then Kier Meredith, and Davis Sharp. It's been Kier Meredith, who has gotten on base twice and both times, throwing errors by Carmen Majenski. But both times he's left stranded at third to end the inning. Fly ball out to center. Noah Myers did not have to move. One down quickly here in the fifth. Two straight cutters there from Carmen Majenski. Get the easy fly out there to center field, but certainly saw Henderson leaning out over there. Still think Majenski to, to have some success. He's going to have to get that fastball in. That is a fair That's a ball, fair ball. There. And again, Meredith is on base. Three in a row now for Kier Meredith. And he's advanced pass first every time. A single reached on an error, and then now that's a tough, tough. Yeah, Majinski goes tough, with tough the, play for the first base. Yeah, and Majinski goes with the cutter there again. As I, I just, I, gosh, I mean, he's throwing 95, 96, and he's got a great sinker. I just, he's yet to give up a hard hit ball with that sinking fastball, Birch. And I just think that he's giving Clemson an opportunity to be able to put the barrel on the ball. Whereas I think if he stays with a hard sinker there, he, he's just getting ground outs and, and easy outs. Every time that he's had Kier Meredith it's turned out to be something stressful. But well, you he's know, worked Meredith, his way out of it yeah, I mean, each Mer time. He has, and Meredith's that type of player, obviously, uh, certainly a very, very good athlete. And Majinski now goes back with that cutter again. Walking a ground out for Sharp, and he misses badly there. One ball, two strikes. And it actually looked like uh, – Beaver was set up in there, and that was a, a fastball, a good sinker there. 
that uh, I, this is when you got to double up, in my opinion. I, I just think that uh, I think he's probably going to go back with the cutter here. And he stays with the fastball. That is wrecked out to left, and that is way out of here. Another two-run shot for Clemson off of Carmen Majinski. The Tigers came into this series with only two home runs in their pocket as a team through eight games. They've matched that already here tonight against Carolina starter Carmen Majinski, who's given up only two home runs this season and both the two, run, two home runs he's given up to Clemson. Yeah, I mean, that's just a fastball out over the middle of the plate again, and it runs back to the middle. You know, and I, I still I still think, you know, that's never a good pitch. You never want to do that, but I think he gets away with it if he's shown the guys that he can pitch to both sides of the plate, and I think that's where Carmen Majinski is getting hurt right now. Another good cutter there, but again, these guys are looking middle away and even though that ball was pulled into left center for a, a two-run home run, they're just only having to look to one side of the plate right now. And for Sharp Davis, his first home run of the season, the sophomore, first RBIs as well. Through five games for Sharp Davis. I mean, that pitch is unhittable. I mean, in my opinion, that's a ball. I mean, that pitch is, in, you know, three balls off the plate. But, again, amazing execution by Majinski. Outstanding backdoor sinker. I mean, that, that, that's, that's big league stuff right there. And I think that he's just, he just got to develop and learn a little bit more how to use that on both sides of the plate. And if he does that, uh, it's – it can be very, very special. Adam Hackenberg led off the fourth with a double, and then Dylan Brewer brought him home in a big home run. In foul territory, and we'll reach the seats. Clemson with a 4 nothing lead. Cocky with a great assist there. So Majinski ahead of the Clemson banner, Adam Hackenberg. He got Elijah Henderson, the leadoff man here in the fifth, to fly out to center, but then gave up a single and a big two-run home run to Davis Sharp. Came back with a strikeout of James Parker, trying to get Hackenberg to do the same. Does not get the call from Scott Kennedy to go his way, and that's an even count now, two balls, two strikes. Full count. Seventy pitches now for Carmen Majinski. He deals the three two. Chance for Heinrich at third. Throw over. Not there. Instead of getting out of the inning, Majinski has another batter he'll have to deal with, and it was the guy that went deep his last time up, and this is freshman Dylan Brewer. Yeah, that should go down as an E5 there, throwing error by Heinrich, and this is where you got to dig deep if you're Carmen Majinski. South Carolina still in this game at four to nothing here. Did you see a slow roller? Good job of getting the short hop there. But tough, bad throw there by Heinrich. But, again, I think this is a potential game changer here. Majinski needs to do a good job of limiting Clemson right here and getting out of this inning. First pitch strike to Dylan Brewer. 
182 batter, big two run home run first of his collegiate career. Fly ball, Campbell trying to track it down and left. And that is a fair ball. And that's a huge break, I think, coming up here for South Carolina as the runner's going to have to go back to third base as that ball bounces out of play for a ground rule double. This is when I think you got to make a mound visit here if you're Skylar Mead to try to stop a little bit of this momentum, slow the game down there as Campbell not able to make that play. Here's Campbell coming in. Is it fan interference as well? Man. I thought. That ball was in the air a long yeah. time. That play's got to be made. So runners at second and third here. And that was a big, big sigh of relief if you're Campbell and the Gamecocks getting that to hop out bringing the runner back to third and planted at second is Brewer. See there's the second time now Beaver sets up with a fastball in and Majinski not able to execute there. And, and, and that just, you know, you can't have that be the second time you try to throw a fastball inside and here we are in the fifth inning. Three balls, no strikes. Two outs, two on. Four run lead for Clemson. Runners in scoring position tonight. Two home runs, four RBIs. Three balls, one strike. A single and a strikeout today for Hawkins. Count goes full. If you're Majinski, you can at least look to Mikowski, the next batter on deck, if he happens to walk Hawkins here, he's got a guy that is 0 for 13 this season that he struck out twice tonight. Of course, he doesn't even want to take it that far. Certainly a taxing inning here now for Carmen Majinski. It started with Kier Meredith too. Three-two pitch, he strikes him out. Clemson strands a pair, but the Tigers, courtesy of the long ball, extend their lead four to nothing on South Carolina. The Gamecock match will try to warm things up and see if they can break through on Weatherly. When we come back to Columbia, it will be seven, eight, and nine in the Gamecock order. Two home runs tonight for the Tigers. They lead game one of this series. Blanket, folks. The temperature continues to drop here in Columbia, South Carolina, but not so much for the Clemson Bats as they came into the opening game of this rivalry weekend with just two home runs as a team. They've got two home runs tonight. And this guy, Sam Weatherly, for the Clemson Tigers, he's had command of the strike zone for sure today. Two Walks one hit batter though. Those are the only Gamecock base runners so far. South Carolina had a chance in the third to get something going. They had runners at first and second with one out, but Weatherly was able to get a strikeout and a fly ball to left to get out of there unscathed. Followed that up with a one, two, three inning, and now he's got seven, eight, and nine in the Gamecock order. Khalil 
We'll send that to center. One out as Mikowski makes that play easily. You see Weatherly now pitching with a 4-0 lead as he's just attacking the Gamecock hitters. Two straight fastballs. I don't blame him. If I'm, if I'm him now throwing 94, 95, 96 miles an hour with a 4-0 lead, I am attacking these Gamecock hitters and trying to steal some easy outs to get deeper in the game. Three straight fastballs now by Weatherly. And again, I, it, it, it's not that you don't throw the breaking ball, but again, it's a little bit of a different mentality now, especially with a 4 nothing lead. Dallas Beaver. Count goes even, one ball, one strike to Beaver. Gamecock catcher who walks in the third to lead off the Carolina third, but was left stranded on second base. Count goes to 2-1. Beaver, grad transfer. Played at Central Florida. Was a good player there for the Knights. Had another year of eligibility, using it. Here in Columbia, South Carolina for Mark Kingston. This pitch has to be one pitch, one spot. In my opinion, if you're Beaver, South Carolina down four, needing base runners. Good job by Beaver there to step out. Call time. Get Weatherly out of his rhythm. And drawing another walk, Dallas Beaver. Four walks now. Gamecocks have Put five base runners on, but have yet to muster a hit against starter Sam Weatherly. Braylon Wimmer, who sacrificed himself to put Dallas Beaver on second his last time up. Not going to be asked to do that here. Good take there by Wimmer, and that's a, a slider there that backed up a little bit on Weatherly, but uh, caught the top half part of the zone for strike one. Yeah, Clemson going with their orange tops tonight, Birch. Did you ever wear orange in your playing days? You know, no, never. Never? No. Well, believe it or not, I did with the Harley Haven travel team that I played with Jeff Smoke coach and Rick Kester back in the day we had some uh, Brooklyn Casey High School a uh, couple Carolina former teammates as well man I tell you Harley Haven think about that what a great name TJ Lucas his parents owns Harley Haven here in town the the motorcycle motorcycle yeah, dealership but I wore orange and I did wear it proud as a member of the Harley Haven, I will say that. 2-2 two -two count now. Braylon Wimmer, Gamecock freshman second baseman. Did you guys drive or Harleys to the games? I wish. We did ride in an Astro, though. Old Tommy Roof, Wade Roof's dad, uh, a lot of us would hop in there and go on our road trips there. I mean, it was just, it's a beaut. I mean, I, I hope it's still around. Just an amazing, I mean, it had curtains in it. It was unreal. <laughs> was it airbrushed? <laughs> it was awesome. Did you have a fire-breathing dragon? Oh, boy. Here's a 2-2. And Wimmer, the freshman now, has worked a full count. This is turning into a... Lengthy, lengthy at bat yeah. now here for Wimmer, and a good job. Beaver before him. Yeah, and I go back to that 1-1 count. 
with Beaver, and he goes with the slider there for nothing. If I'm left on left, throw a 95, I'm like, Beaver, here it is, hit it. I'm throwing it 95 right down the middle. See what you got. Best man win. And now he's working himself into a potential jam. Gets the call, strike three there, though, as Wimmer thought he was going to take first on the walk. Instead, Scott Kennedy punches him out. Seven strikeouts now for Weatherly. And again, I think that's just a college strike. I, I think that's ball four in my opinion. But, you know, credit to Scott Kennedy. He's been calling it. South Carolina certainly has gotten that pitch called as well. But uh, I just wish I wish college baseball would fix that because that, that, that's ball four there. Strikeout and a walk tonight for Gamecocks leadoff batter Noah Myers. A runner on here, but two outs. South Carolina down four runs, four to nothing. Fouled off the bat of Noah Meyer, so the count is in favor of Sam Weatherly. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, one on. Dallas Beaver walking both times up tonight against Sam Weatherly. Clemson will have the bottom of their order. Hawkins or rather, uh, Pierce Gallo will follow Makowski, and then it's to the top of the order. Staying alive, Noah Myers after that foul. Keeps that count, one ball, two strikes. 80 pitches now thrown for Sam Weatherly. Yeah, if Myers can somehow get on here and try to extend this inning, I think one thing it does do is run that pitch count up a little bit more as South Carolina would love to get Weatherly out of this game, yet to allow a hit. Noah Myers goes down swinging. It's another strikeout for Sam Weatherly. The Gamecocks leave a runner on. We have played five here in Columbia at Founders Park. Weatherly. In control of Gamecock hitters right now. It's four to nothing, Clemson. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Crowded house here at Founders Park to get this rivalry weekend underway here in Columbia, South Carolina. Clemson, a pair of two run home runs off of eight hits, no errors. South Carolina just befuddled right now by Sam Weatherly. Yeah, Clemson's he's been strong. outstanding, Birch, and Majinski is still in this game because he is throwing strikes. Yes, he's given up two two-run two home runs, but he's going to try to save the bullpen for the weekend here and try to keep his team in the game. This is still a game. I mean, obviously, South Carolina hasn't gotten any hits off Weatherly. He's been amazing, but his pitch count's up above 80 now. Majinski needs to put up a zero here. Bo Mikowski to lead things off for Clemson. Mikowski hitless today and hitless this season. Two strikeouts, both swinging against Majenski. Called strike, count goes even. On deck is Pierce Gallo, the freshman shortstop who is 0 for 2 today. Two one do. This is for a ball. Three one count now to Bo Mikowski. Mikowski has not reached base at all this season, but he does here, and that's the way you get out of a nothing and thirteen slump. 
When you keep seeing too many pitches, you're going to go and get yourself a hit sometime. Yeah, and I mean, that's a, obviously a hitter's count, 3-1 there. He's just sitting dead red and, uh, and gets a fastball right down the middle and um, yeah, does, does a good job of, 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 of getting a hit there. And I just think that Majinski, you know, if I'm facing a guy that's hitless on the season, I'm looking to throw the ball right down the middle and let it sink and, and just try to get him to pull off the ball and get a ground ball to second base. And, but when you throw four or five pitches to him, it, it makes a difference as we'll see a pinch runner here for Clemson. It's Bryce Theodoso. So here's Pierce Gallo now 0 for 2 tonight, a ground out to short and a strikeout looking. Comes in with an average at now 125. And I, I figured we might see a little bit of small ball here from head coach Monty Lee for Clemson trying to get that fifth run across. There's a number nine hole guy in Gallo squared around early and took a cutter for ball one. Gets the strike there, Majinski does. Even the count, one ball, one strike. There's Monty Lee. Clemson head coach knows an awful lot about this series from both sides. Off and running, throw down from Beaver. Not in time. Safe at second is Mikowski, first stolen base. Actually, it was Teodosio running for Mikowski. A really good throw there from Beaver on a very, very tough pitch. Good jump by Tedosio. Or Teodosio, sorry. Um, wow, tough, tough play there. It's going to be reviewed. I thought he was in there. I thought he was safe. We'll take another look at it. Three for three this season on stolen bases. When there, Teodosio is running for Bo Mikowski, who reached base for the first time this season, getting his first hit of the year. How, about, how would you like that? You get your first hit on the season. They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know what? It's the first time you've only reached base this yeah, season. Yeah, just go ahead and sit down, man. We're, you're good. You, you got a hit. Just go ahead and we'll call it a day. Yeah, I'm like, let me run, Coach, please. Here's what we're looking at. Yeah, I, just, I don't see that I don't, I don't being either. overturned. I don't either. I think he's safe, easy. From that angle, it, it just doesn't seem to me that you could trump the human eyes. It's a very good effort by Khalil. Good job of getting out in front of the bag. I mean, he's safe. I, I, this should be a quick call, in my opinion, unless, unless he comes he, off. Yeah, there. does he come off? I mean, that, that, that's the only question that I have on that is. Mark Kingston yeah, sees call. that call confirmed. Teodosio down at second base, stealing the third bag of the season. Runner in scoring position with no outs. You know, Gallo right here, Birch, he's trying to hit the ground ball to the right side. I mean, this is where if this pitch is anything other than a sinker on the inner half, I, I just, I, I, unless he's trying to throw a breaking ball for strike three where he chases, Bad base running there. Out at third is the call. Clemson is going to immediately, I think, probably challenge. Yeah, head coach Monty Lee's coming out and already saying they want to challenge that. I'm not quite sure. Did you see the reaction from Heinrich there? Yeah, either way, bad base running there from Tia Deosio. Good play by Khalil. The runner was called out trying to advance to third there on a routine ground ball to shortstop. A play like this in this game, Birch, could be a, 
a momentum shift for South Carolina. Maybe they dropped the ball. Oh, I don't know. It was still on the glove there. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure what he could be referring to if you're Clemson. To me, they are on the review. It seems like it's going to be an out. I mean, a throw obviously beats him. You see where he's standing there, obviously a little bit out to the right of third base in the line. Get some good views here from the crew. Another look, and I just don't see that being overruled either. What you got working over here, Bert? You got a little body armor, uh, tropical punch drink? I mean, is that, are you, is, is this part of your plan? Are you, I know you're working out heavily. It, no, I'm is trying it, to uh, hopefully avoid any kind of potential uh, harmful whatever's going on out there. It's giving everybody this <laughs> the, the cough and the. Oh, is this the coronavirus? Like, uh, uh, oh, oh no, no, hopefully none of that. Don't mention that word, but. Okay. It's one of those things that everybody seems to have right now. So is that something I need to go, you know, make a purchase on the way home tonight and stock up for the weekend? Or just, you know, drink after my hot chocolate like you did earlier. Oh, that Good was your you. – oh, you drank – oh, okay. All right. I meant to warn you. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. Wow, I did. Hmm. So this other one over here, is that You're going to be quarantined too? tonight. <laughs> and we see the call now. Out. It's confirmed. Out. Coach Monty Lee is going to come out and talk to home plate umpire Scott Kennedy right here and at least talk to him about what he thought there. And I'm just wondering if it's because of where Heinrich was and it had anything to do with being in the, the baseline there out as he was definitely a step or two in front of the bag in relation to second to third. That's a big play there for South Carolina to get that first out recorded and keep that runner at first base now. So one out, one on. Elijah Henderson today 0 for 3. Fly out and two ground balls over to Heinrich at third. On deck, Kier Meredith, who has reached three times. That's going to put a runner in scoring position as it advances the runner to second. Ball to the screen. Pierce Gallo, the freshman shortstop, taking second. So Tigers. One out, runner at second base, and a guy on deck who has been on every base tonight, every bag he's touched. Ground ball to second. That took away an inning ending double play. Yeah, and that's just a perfect example there. A 2-0 count. You've got your leadoff hitter up, and that's the swing he gets. You know, he's looking to try to drive the ball, and that just shows you that should tell, you know, Carmen Bajinski, okay, what kind of stuff do I have? I mean, that's a 2-0 count, and he throws a sinker right down the middle and gets a lazy ground ball to second base. A couple of singles, double run scored. For this guy, Kier Meredith, who has reached successfully this season for Clemson in every game. I don't believe 
Meredith is lacking any confidence. I guess Majinski at the plate here. Majinski gets a good strike there. One one, missing low. Ninety two pitches here for Carmen Majinski looking for the ninety third, missing outside. Three balls, one strike to count to Meredith. Dallas Beaver comes out. On deck for Clemson, Davis Sharp, who blasted the home run his last time up. He's walked and grounded out to short. And I think this is, uh, you know, Bajens, he's got a sense. Hey, I, I, I got to get this out. He needs to throw his best two-seam sinker down and away right here and try to get an out. If not, I think his day may be over. He brings the 3-1. And he steals a strike there with a cut fastball on the inside corner. Good pitch there by Majenski. Three-two count. Two outs, runner on third. Hit well and deep and gone. First home run of the season for Meredith. And it's another two-run blast for Clemson tonight. They lead six to nothing. I was wondering if you just don't even throw it near the zone with Meredith and take your chances with somebody else. Every inning that guy has been in the sequence, it has disturbed Majinski and has led to runs for the Tigers. And he goes with another cutter here, and that ball just doesn't cut and stays up in the zone. I just, you know, he gave a very first inning, he throws a fastball, and Weatherly, or excuse me, Meredith hits a ground ball in the four hole for a base hit, and ever since then he's been scared to throw him a fastball, and I just think that I'm just not quite sure that that's the, the you know, where he needed to go there. If I'm, again, if I've got the Majinski fastball that, that he does, I'm staying hard there and challenging him. Well, he also could have had Meredith not even taking that swing because the batter before him, who had grounded out in a second, Henderson, that could have been an inning ending double play for the Gamecocks had that wild, patch, wild pitch not occurred that put the runner over to second. Oh, they call that a wild pitch. I was thinking that should have been a pass ball. That was a good sinker like that one, and, and, and Beaver does a good job of, of getting that elbow up and in and thumb down to be able to make the catch there. It was a, it was a pass okay, ball. Okay, it right. was a pass ball. Good. I, I think that's the right call. But you're right, Birch. I mean, that was a ground ball double play. No question. He gets the strike out there, but Clemson doing damage again on Carmen Majinski, who had come into this game. No home runs on the table this year. Clemson coming in with two as a team. They've hit three tonight off of Majinski. They lead six to nothing. Six to nothing, Clemson off of 10 hits, no errors. South Carolina is yet to muster a hit on Sam Weatherly, the starter for the Tigers. Noah Campbell to lead off for the Gamecocks. Campbell, a pair of strikeouts today. It will be Campbell, Eister, and Wes Clark. Here in the Gamecock sixth, looking to rally. 
looking for an answer to Sam Weatherly. Called strike. One ball, two strikes here to Campbell. 3.20 on the season. 0-2 tonight, though. And the Gamecocks third. They did have two runners on with one out, but nothing doing, and nothing doing here for Noah Campbell. He goes down swinging again. Three strikeouts tonight for Campbell, and for South Carolina, Myers and Campbell, top of the order, they have struck out a total of five times. Here's Andrew Eister, hit by a pitch and a fly out on his resume tonight. Hit a home run against Clemson in the series on opening night last year. Eighty-seven pitches and the count is two balls, no strikes. On a night where Weatherly has started these Gamecock batters off with first pitch strikes usually. That just goes to show you there what great stuff Weatherly has. The 2-0 count there. Eister getting a fastball and just not looking very comfortable. Fly ball, right field. Play is. That's an out. Yeah, it's an out made by Dylan Brewer. Well, you know, Brewer's got to love it. A freshman from Latta getting the Tigers on the board with the first of three straight two-run bombs starting in the fourth inning. Mark Kingston coming out of the Gamecock dugout wants to have a word with Scott Kennedy. Six to nothing, Clemson. Getting runs tonight on three two-run home runs. Each home run hitter tonight, the first of their season. Mark Kingston having a heated discussion here with Scott Kennedy. And Mark Kingston playing this so well, nobody knows what he's saying except who he wants that to be known to. First baseman, Wes Clark, strikeout and a ground out to second. And Mark Kingston there, I think, had some choice words, but probably trying to do absolutely anything he can to break up a rhythm from Sam Weatherly here. Let's see if Weatherly uses that as a little bit of motivation. You see there he's overthrowing there. I got a feeling he wants to strike out Wes Clark right here and probably – wouldn't surprise me if he stares into the Gamecock dugout, just in good spirit, just in good competition. But I can assure you, if I was the opposing pitcher, that would be motivation for me. But I think a very, very good move by head coach Mark Kingston. Of course, certainly. You, you know, you, you're getting no hit. You're down 6 nothing. There, there's still four frames here to try and make a comeback, and you want to do anything you can to try to break up a little bit of rhythm from Weatherly. Swing and a miss. Count evens up two balls, two strikes. And that's Kingston coming out saying, I got to put a bet in my hand now. Yeah, unfortunately for the Gamecocks, Weatherly is just overmatching these Gamecock hitters so far this evening.
Here's the choo-choo. He gets him, and he is certainly pumped, no doubt about it, Sam Weatherly. Gamecocks go down one, two, three, ten strikeouts for Weatherly. Hudson will take the 6 nothing lead. Courtesy of home runs and big time strikes from Weatherly. If you're Clemson, those are mighty good numbers. From South Carolina, you're looking for something polar opposite. We've played six, and it's six runs. Clemson off of ten hits. No error. South Carolina just puzzled tonight by starter Sam Weatherly. We've had a couple of base runners, but it's been either a hit batter, a walk here or there, and that's all. Ten strikeouts tonight of Gamecock hitters, and South Carolina has had some chances to get out of innings for Carmen Machinsky, but just couldn't do it. And so Tringali, Cam Tringali, will come on to get this inning underway. The night is done for Majinski. It will be the second appearance of the season for Tringali. ERA at three through three innings, five hits, two strikeouts, no walks. James Parker taking that for First pitch strike, it's Parker, then Hackenberg and Brewer. Good slider there from Cam Tringali. You know, and I go back to Weatherly. When he struck out Noah Campbell on three straight fastballs, Birch, I just think that that was a, a very, very important part of the game where he really went back to his fastball, and since then he's thrown the slider, and he's thrown it well, but I tell you what, he has just been electric with his fastball and outstanding. A good job there by Cam Tringali to get it out here. And, it, you know, you look at it, it's the top of the seventh. You know, South Carolina certainly not in a great position, but this ball game's not over. You know, South Carolina certainly has the capability of coming back, but they got to put up some zeros. So Tringali gets another first pitch strike. This time is Hackenberg, Adam Hackenberg, who has a double. That started the Clemson scoring in the fourth inning. He let off of that double, and then it was Dylan Brewer getting his first home run of the season and of his collegiate career, actually. Good job by Beaver there, get, letting that ball get deep and catching it, maybe still in a strike. Good pitch by Tringali. Nothing in two. One ball, two strikes now to Hackenberg. Hackenberg hitting at 281 now, one for three today. Galley will tow the rubber again. Big power pitch to get the strikeout. Two quick outs now for Cam Tringali to get the seventh start. Good lift fastball there from Tringali. Top part of the strike zone. Can't catch up with the 94. Tringali one out away from putting up a zero in the seventh. Dylan Brewer called strike. So Tringali, this is his third batter, and he started everyone off with first pitch strikes. Looking good for Tringali so far.
Fastball misses low. Carmen Majinski, 99 pitches tonight, six innings, 10 hits, six earned runs, one walk, eight strikeouts, three two-run home runs, the big damage. You know, and, and obviously not a night that Majinski will be happy about, but the one thing I think in his development that I've watched is, you know, last year, and, and again, it wasn't very many starts because he got hurt, obviously, in this series, Birch. But I think he's definitely matured a lot. I think that, that uh, obviously, the stuff's there, how he can use it. Uh, he's got to learn how to use it a little bit better. But the fact that he was able to still throw six innings tonight, and obviously, he'd love to have three pitches back. And, and unfortunately, in baseball, as a pitcher, that happens. It, it's part of the game. But I think it was – Still a step in the right direction for Majinski in his career development because he only had one walk, and uh, he still made some big pitches and got out of some jams when he needed to. But unfortunately for him, he, he, he gave up the long ball tonight. Six to nothing, Clemson. All three long balls, two run homers. Tringali looking to get Brewer on the 3-2. Brewer will hang on. Just got a piece of it. And more importantly, I think, for Tringali, maybe try to start some momentum for Carolina that he could possibly pass off to the guys that would be due up at the plate. Instead, it will be a walk that puts Brewer aboard with two outs and will bring up Hawkins, two strikeouts and a single tonight. Sophomore Briar Hawkins. Galley misses low. Work starting in the Gamecock bullpen now. Cam Tringali from right here in Columbia, South Carolina, went to Cardinal Newman School. That ball is smoked. Off the wall, will bring in a run. Gunning for third and sliding safely in head first. Briar Hawkins. Clemson takes the seven to nothing lead on a two out RBI off of Cam Tringali. Yeah, Tringali just hung that slider there. Well, everything going Clemson's way right now. It's a one hop off the wall, triple, and another run crosses the plate for Clemson. Strike called, Aaron Mikowski. Actually, that's Tia Dozio, I'm sorry, who came in to run for Mikowski, who had reached space for the first time in the season for Mikowski. And then they bring in, as soon as he gets there, Tia Dozio. You know, other than the the two-run homer that Majinski threw, I believe it was in the fifth, was off a fastball. Other than that, all extra base hits, all runs driven in by breaking balls or change-ups tonight for the Clemson Tigers.
high heat and he gets him. But Clemson tacks on a run to make it seven and nothing here in the seventh as we go to stretch time. Opening nights of this rivalry between the Gamecocks and the Tigers. The Tigers making the most of it here in game one. Seven to nothing, Clemson stretch time in Founders Park. Clemson bats have been stretched out tonight. Three two run home runs and RBI triple. Off of 11 hits, no error. South Carolina just hasn't found anything that they can do against Sam Weatherly. They've had some base runners, but no more than two in any frame. Weatherly is just times looks like he's just toying with some of the Gamecock banners that have been in the box to face him for South Carolina. Here's Amic and Jello who struck out and flied out. Then it will be Heinrich and Khalil. The Gamecock bats have just been completely overmatched tonight, but it all goes back with the fastball command from Weatherly. It's just been outstanding. Fly ball right field. One down. Weatherly trying to have a quick inning here as he's approaching the century mark in pitches. Not quite sure if they'll make a hard stop at 100 or maybe extending to let him get up to 105 or so. Obviously this game well in hand for Clemson, but what a job by Sam Weatherly. Skips up for a foul ball or a, a ball to Heinrich here who has played well in the field tonight. Does have an error that he was charged with, but still looking for something he can do against Weatherly. Ground out strikeout tonight for Heinrich lays off that pitch. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Nobody on here for Carolina. You see that again. I mean, 2 0. Looking dead red, Birch and uh, Heinrich. No chance in catching up with that. 100 pitches now. 63 strikes, 37 balls. Evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. Based on those last two swings, I think it's safe to say here Weatherly stays hard. And he does, and a fastball in there is Heinrich goes down looking. Again, we're seeing a guy that's, you know, you say, oh, well, he's throwing 95. Well, 95 can get hit these days. These guys face 95. They can do it, but he's throwing his fastball to both sides of the plate. He's throwing chase fastballs up. He's throwing his slider for a strike. Behind in the count at times tonight, but his fastball command has been outstanding, and the Gamecocks are hitless through six and two thirds. George Khalil lays off. One ball, no strikes. Two outs, no on, nobody on for the Gamecocks. 308 hitter on the season is Khalil. Hits that deep to center. Wow, what, what a, a play. play. Way to hang out there for your pitcher, Bo Mikowski. Boy. Yeah, let's, let's just hope he's okay. I mean, that's a Sports Center top 10 play as a lot of folks for Clemson are going to check on that young man. What an outstanding play. That's a tough play. The, probably the toughest play for a center fielder to make is that ball was directly behind him, but he did a good job. Hmm. I think he's okay there. Maybe he's just playing it off a little bit and uh, getting a little bit of extra air time. I don't know. Boy, his head did hit that wall hard there. 
And he keeps the night hitless. How about that? And let me give the credit where it's due. That was actually for Clemson making that grab. Bryce Teodosio. Top of the eighth inning we go. Seven to nothing, Tigers off of 11 hits. Gamecocks will bring on Thomas for the Gamecocks. Brett Thomas to relieve Cam Galley, who was taking over for starter Carmen Majenski. This will be just his second appearance on the season. One inning of work. No hits, one strikeout, one walk. And leading off for Clemson. It will be for the Tigers. Number four. Pierce Gallo here, and he'll take that strike from Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, a big 6'5 freshman. Colin Burgess in for, to catch as well. Really over the top there, and he's got a breaking ball. His curveball's got over a 3,000 spin rate on it and uh, can be a pretty good pitcher for the Gamecocks. He's battled some injuries a little bit in the fall and spring, but uh, getting some getting an opportunity here to pitch in a big rivalry game and uh, I think an excellent decision here by Skylar Mead, the pitching coach for South Carolina. Clemson just been outstanding tonight, Birch. I mean, just from the very first inning on, obviously it starts with Sam Weatherly, but, you know, the defense they've played behind him has been good. Had Really hadn't had to play a ton of it because Weatherly's been so good, but uh, really been a well-played game for Clemson. Tigers getting three home runs tonight. They had come into this series with just two all season through eight games. A seven and one record. Majinski had not given up a home run. But tonight, game cock pitcher for Carolina, the junior, gives up three. The three two. Wimmer at second. Makes the throw over to Clark at first. So Henderson, Elijah Henderson, hitless tonight. He's got three ground downs and a fly out. You see the numbers for Gamecock pitching compared to the starters, the bullpen, walking batters, 22 walks for the bullpen, 11 for starters. Yeah, and a two-out walk from Tringali last inning cost him a run. Pop foul and out of play. Tomorrow's game will be in Columbia. It will be the first time this series and this rivalry has ever been played at the new ballpark. There's an error by Khalil on a routine ground ball. That Khalil probably makes every other day. Nine times out of ten, I'd say ten times out of ten, probably Khalil's making that one. But. Yeah, he's uh, he, he did a good job. He got a good read on that one, Birch, but uh, – just didn't field from the ground up there as that ball stayed down on him. Really a tough night here for the Gamecocks, but credit Clemson, they, they, they deserve it. They have been outstanding. There's a foul ball 
And this guy has been certainly outstanding tonight, Kier Meredith. Four for four, two singles, a double. Two run home run. George Khalil had five errors a season ago at shortstop. He's got four so far this year early. Wow, I didn't think that ball was fair. And that is the first time that Kier Meredith has kept off the base paths. That was a good stab by Wes Clark. Yeah, good play there by Clark. Only out there, our only chance there is to get an out was just tag first base, but you're not going to be able to tell here, I don't think, but I don't know. Just in, in watching that live, I thought he may have fielded that there just to the right of the first baseline. Weatherly, or not, excuse me, not Weatherly, but Meredith. Burgess throwing to third. Good throw. He got him. So the Tigers run themselves out of the inning. And South Carolina will look for something to get themselves going. Well, that's. Bring it back as it is going to be reviewed. Thought we would get out of here without bringing the replay into the equation. Yeah, and I, I don't blame Monty Lee here, head coach Monty Lee, to, to do this. You know, a lot of folks will say, oh, get it over with. It's, it's a seven to nothing game. And, and yeah, uh, odds are it's. Clemson's going to win this game, but you know what? There's no time in baseball, and head coach Monty Lee here, if he thinks there's a chance that he's safe there, he wants to add on a little bit more. Could this be a rebuttal for what Clemson fans could have seen is Mark Kingston coming out trying to shake up Weatherly? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so, Birch. I really don't. I think he just – I think the third base coach certainly – was adamant that his base runner there was safe. And, uh, again, I, I think it's the right call here. Uh, not only does it uh, is the game not over and, and Clemson wants to extend this lead, but it, it gives guys more at-bats. It gives guys, a you know, uh, you never want to cheat your, your players out of getting opportunities. And, uh, you know, if, if, if they can extend the lead even more, he may be able to make a substitution that he's wanting to make or bring in a pitcher potentially that he's wanting to bring in. So no chance of gamesmanship whatsoever. I don't think so. No, I don't, Bert. In this rivalry series. Looking at the review, Kip, what do you see? Man, I tell you, I, I – Looks like the ruling – on the field is an out would yeah, stand to me. I, I think it's going to be tough to overturn it, but I, I I think if he was called safe, he would have. It, it'd be tough to overturn it as well. Certainly think it was close enough for a replay. Out indeed is the call. So we've gone to the replay three times tonight, and calls all confirmed. It's seven to nothing, Clemson. South Carolina will look to brew something when we return. Seven to nothing, Clemson over South Carolina as we look at Jeffrey Gilbert from Charleston, South Carolina, the freshman coming in to relieve Weatherly, who was spot on tonight. One win on the year for Gilbert through five appearances. Five innings of work, two hits allowed, seven strikeouts, five walks. If you're South Carolina, Weatherly had you just befuddled all game. If you're a Gamecock, come up slate clean. First time you're looking at a freshman pitcher who has some numbers where he certainly don't match up with Weatherly. You've got a chance now to put some runners aboard, you think? Yeah, and this freshman getting an opportunity. You know, Jeffrey Gilbert's just going to have to do a good job of, of of pounding the strike zone and going right after these South Carolina hitters as 
you know, you know, you say befuddled. I mean, quite frankly, Sam Weatherly just overmatched right. the South Carolina bats tonight. Just outstanding outing. Seven innings, no runs, no hits, you know, a couple walks. I mean, just outstanding stuff from Sam Weatherly as he has just absolutely dominated the South Carolina bats tonight. And Kip, he had command of his number one and number two pitch. Yes, he did. I mean, and, and you know, when you have a plus fastball throwing 95 from the left side and using it on both sides of the plate, quite frankly, you can get a lot of guys out that way alone. But if you've also got a slider that you can throw, we saw him throw it behind in the count at times. Just outstanding work from Sam Weatherly. Colin Burgess trying to get something going to start for South Carolina. Behind in the count, nothing and two. Sam Hall is the new second baseman in for Clemson. Gilbert gets the strikeout. So the Gamecocks have one out. And it will be Braylon Wimmer, number nine hitter coming to the plate, who had a sack bunt and then a strikeout looking, both against Sam Weatherly. Well, welcome to the South Carolina Clemson rivalry, arguably the best in college baseball. Freshman Jer Jeffrey Gilbert just blowing the fastball by for his first strikeout in this rivalry outstanding stuff from Jeffrey Gilbert Wimmer looks at ball one it's even one ball one strike one out Clemson ahead seven to nothing Gilbert getting the foul ball to the screen, so he jumps ahead now, one ball, two strikes. Charleston, South Carolina pitch for the battling bishops of Bishop England. That is slaps third baseman, has it? Nicely wow. picked it first. That's a great pick there by Briar Hawkins and a great play by third baseman James Parker. Good job of coming in and cutting that ball off there. That was certainly the third baseman's ball. Good angle and an outstanding pick. Clemson doing it all tonight here in Columbia. And you saw that James Parker quickly said thanks man to his first baseman. So two outs, top of the Gamecock lineup. Batting from the left side, Noah Myers. A walk and two strikeouts. Where the Gamecocks just absolutely being overmatched. I mean, they're, they're you know, first had to face Weatherly 94-95, and now the freshman Jeffrey Gilbert 90-92, and, he, and he's got that hammer. I mean, wow, what a good pitch there. It's a really, really good breaking ball there from the South Carolina native. Gets the 1-1 one, one for a strike. One ball, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Think we'll see the hammer here again, Birch? I would go with that, certainly. All right, he stays hard there. Outstanding pitch by Jeffrey Gilbert as he continues the strong pitching performance from the Clemson Tigers. Strike three on the outside corner. Outstanding stuff from the young freshman from Charleston.
Gamecock batters have been camouflaged tonight. As Clemson pitching has just wrapped up Carolina. They go to the ninth, seven to nothing Tigers. Brady Allen is inserted into the Gamecocks outfield. He'll move to right and that will put Eister, I believe, over in left. You know, Bert, you always look at opportunities and what, what went wrong for South Carolina, what you can try to do better. And, and you know, I, obviously tonight the bats were definitely so, slow for South Carolina. And, but I just had to credit Clemson and Sam Weatherly and Jeffrey Gilbert. I mean, they've just been outstanding tonight. And, again, they're pitching to both sides of the plate. They're throwing their breaking ball for strikes. Um, just just overmatched South Carolina tonight. And this is when, you know, if this game finishes up, certainly like it looks it's going to, this is when South Carolina's just got to rebound. Another day is tomorrow, and they've got to come out and get a good performance from their starter and uh, and, and, and see what they can do. I mean, Thomas Farr is, is going for the Gamecocks tomorrow against Davis Sharp for Clemson. Here it's Trey Tuich, and he's facing a Chad Ferry. How do you think? Look at Chad Ferry there, the sophomore from Greenwood. Kip, well, now you're usually the big aficionado of anything that's below the nose and above the lip. That's a dirty stash, isn't it? Eister in left. And Tuich quickly now makes some work here in the ninth. So one out. Ferry going down on the fly ball. And that will bring up for Clemson here, James Parker, third baseman. Two huge plays in the field, too, tonight by Clemson. One made by the first baseman on the stab throw. Of, it was coming from the third baseman, and then how about that play in center that kept that no hitter intact for Weatherly. Tuich gets the strikeout. Two quick outs now. Yeah, good pitch there from Tuich as he's trying to earn some more opportunities. The young freshman there, really, really good pitch there from Tuich as he's trying to go one, two, three here in the ninth. One hit today for Adam Hackenberg. He's one for four. Scored a run and has a double on that resume. Count evens up one ball, one strike. Jeffrey Gilbert, the freshman, looked just as menacing with his fastball command as the starter tonight, Weatherly. And I'm sure Monty Lee will bring Gilbert back out, try to finish off the Gamecocks tonight. As sharp as he was, his last frame here is Tuich trying to get the Gamecocks out quickly so they can at least try and put something together. Certainly don't want to be in a situation where you're going into tomorrow where you're really, really in a foul mood. But, you know, a series is not won on Friday. No, it's not, Birch. And, uh, again, like you said, you, you, you live to fight every day. And two it's there going with a 3-2 slider and just missing down and away. And, I mean, I hate to say it, but for South Carolina, I mean, they just need to get a freaking hit. I mean, they're, they're at a point now where it's, it's not um, – I mean, you never want to get no hit. 
especially in a rivalry. But you know what? If you're the the root sellers, the little roots, and coaches pitch, yes, it's okay. It it is um, to know it's not. It's especially if the coach is pitching to you. Yeah, unfortunately, runs, I've thrown some. Hits, no um, errors. I've, I've I've thrown some some no hit a lot of no hit innings when I'm the pitcher and I'm pitching to my hitters. And you hit a kid a couple of times, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I hit a kid uh, the other night. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. We got practice tomorrow at eleven. The root sellers. I tell you what, I mean they're going to be in action here March seventh. It's it's going to be special. Wow, good change up there from Tuich. You know I really like this young freshman. I mean he's. I think he's got an opportunity to be good for the Gamecocks down the road, and he's got good stuff. It's just a matter of getting comfortable out there, developing, moving in to, to, to play college baseball, and obviously against great competition like he's facing here in Clemson tonight. Runner stays put at first. Count evens up two balls, two strikes. So tomorrow's game here in Columbia will be at Segra Park, all of the Fireflies, the minor league organization here for the capital city. And that is a beautiful ballpark. Could be some shakeup in minor league towns. Hopefully not, but, you know, there's a possibility that a lot of teams may be non-existent. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Tuich gets him. The Tigers will leave a runner, and the Gamecocks will try to muster something as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Clemson, 7, South Carolina, 0. The Clemson Tigers We'll look to close out the Gamecocks and take game one of this rivalry series here in Columbia. They go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And for the Clemson Tigers, they're going to keep Jeffrey Gilbert on the hill, the freshman from Charleston and Bishop England High School. A quick work of Carolina dispatching the Gamecocks one, two, three with a pair of strikeouts. When he came in to start the eighth inning after seven innings of no-hit work by Weatherly. Here's Brady Allen, sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. First trip up for Allen tonight. He was inserted into the outfield last inning defensively. Eister and then Wes Clark do up here in the bottom of the ninth inning. May have been one of the best swings by a Gamecock hitter tonight as Allen just fouled that one straight back. You, know, you go back to Teodosio's amazing play there in center field. Oh, yes. To keep this no-no alive for Clemson. And that was the last pitch thrown by Weatherly, too. Good take there by Allen as, you know, we talked about it a little bit prior to that play that, that Teodosio made, but boy, sure is shallow here. February 24th, 1990 versus Northwestern, the last time the Gamecocks were no-no'd. And that is deep. Gone, and there goes that no-no. And if you get the hit, get the home run. And that's what South Carolina does, as that ball was crushed for Carolina. Brady Allen 
Brady Allen getting it done for Carolina. And Founders Park has yet to see the Gamecocks be no head upon. Yeah, that fastball just right out over the middle of the plate. Brady Allen did a good job of getting that front foot down and getting in a good hitting position. Haven't seen that much tonight, but credit Clemson pitching for that. Brady Allen breaks up the no-no and the shutout. And at this point in the game, obviously the Gamecocks are trying to find just some type of momentum heading into tomorrow. Andrew Eicher had a home run in the first game of the rivalry series at Clemson last year. He and T.J. Hopkins went yard. That was a game South Carolina won. They lost the second and then won the third here in clinching the series, winning the series for the first time in four tries, in the last four tries in front of this Founders Park crowd. If you follow Mr. Sam, who runs the Twitter account and also the TKO kitchen here at the ballpark, he's already said South Carolina is going to have a huge rally here. Nice feeling it, huh? Maybe they'll tie it up and he'll bring us some chicken. That will never happen as far as the chicken part being brought to us. Upstairs for a ball. Why is that, Birch? I mean, what, what do we – I mean – we can get a runner. I mean, we can, we can, you know, we can get somebody to go grab it. I mean, that, that's possible. Are, are you saying that no food's allowed up here in the booth, or where are we at on that? I think Mr. Sam just has no idea where we are. Swing and a miss, and that's a big strikeout for Gilbert to come back after giving up the home run to Allen to get Eister there. Again, just overmatched there. Eister chasing. That's a tough one to lay off of, though. I mean, that's a borderline. I mean, it's probably a ball, should be a ball, but uh, just not able to catch up with that one as Gamecocks now are down to their final two outs. That's the first out of the inning. And it brings up for Carolina another guy with a lot of pop in his bat, Wes Clark, but he struggled against the starter, Weatherly. Bryant Bowen on deck. He's grabbed a bat for the first time. So Bowen would will hit for Emma Kangelo in the five hole. You know, I think the real reason why we're, we've never seen the, the free chicken is business people stay in business because they don't give away things for enough for free. Well, you know, Birch, I mean, we're giving him some air time. You know, I think um, I, I think Mr. Sam would, would, would hook us up. I, I, I do. I think we just uh, maybe need to approach him. High fly ball center fielder is there. Two outs now. So Clemson just went out away from taking game one of the rivalry series. But Carolina spoiling the no-hit bid. And spoiling it with a home run. So Bryant Bowen, graduate transfer from Shreveport, Louisiana, played at Southern Miss. Kip, what do you think of the decision to move Brett Carey from starting role back to a reliever's chance this weekend against this big, big rivalry series here against the Tigers? Well, you know, it's one of those, I think if you ask me tomorrow after the fifth or sixth inning, if it's the, if it's the right move. But I understand the move by Mark Kingston. I think he had to, unfortunately, 
two or three of the key back end of the bullpen guys for South Carolina not throwing enough strikes, and you got to have strike throwers at the end of the game. The Gamecocks now down to their last strike, Birch, and I tell you again, just a well, extremely well, obviously almost perfectly pitched game by the Clemson Tigers, just completely dominating the Gamecocks here tonight. Nothing in two to Bryant Bowen. Stays alive. Combined performance for Sam Weatherly and freshman Jeffrey Gilbert. Weatherly going a long way and Boy, that last pitch, you thought the Gamecocks were going to get a hit out of it, but it was a beautifully played ball by the center fielder, Teodosio. Then Gilbert came on in the eighth, put down the Gamecocks 1-2-3. But then the first batter in the ninth, pinch hit home run, Brady Allen. Another foul ball for Bowen. And Brian Bowen looking for a, another chance to extend something and keep it going for the Gamecocks. But they're down to their last strike. Heinrich on deck if Bowen could certainly get this inning extended and the ball game going. But time called first and now Bowen back in. Strike three called. Gilbert punches out Bowen. And the Clemson Tiger pitching staff just dominant tonight. Weatherly and Gilbert, beautifully done by those two guys. Three two-run home runs by Clemson pit batters. And then a two-out RBI to add the one run they needed to make it 7-1. to one. Clemson taking game one of the series. Yep. Yeah, Clemson outstanding tonight. You look at the box score and you just see complete domination. And uh, it was a actually a really, really fun game to watch. Sam Weatherly absolutely dominating the Gamecocks tonight. Seven innings of no-hit ball and Jeffrey Gilbert finishing off. Just outstanding, well-played game by Clemson. Uh, they definitely, definitely played very, very well tonight to beat the Gamecocks in game one. For our entire crew in Columbia, for Kip Bolt Knight, I am Birch Hantley saying so long from Founders Park. We'll talk to you next time.